I didn't sign up for this. Uh, I believe you're the only one. Well, the argument yeah. could be made. Just to say you started this. Yeah. Because I thought it was going to be a good idea at the time. At the time, I was like, you know, there's some good female players. Maybe we could, like, raise some visibility for female RPG tabletop gamers. Maybe we could do something nice. No, we can't have nice things. I didn't sign up for this. You should know better. Uh, yeah. Anyways, welcome back, guys, to another week of Good Girls Gone Bad. Set in the Forgotten Realms, the Border Kingdoms, we have... Belinda, Jadis, Michelle, and Carolyn. Uh, this will be Michelle's first week actually playing a character with us, so looking forward to that. And uh, if we could start off with Belinda, if you would recount what you remember about last week's session as it pertained to question mark woman, and then we'll just go around the table and uh, talk about our characters and what we've been doing, and then get right into this campaign. Okay, so as professional owl whisperer remembers. Let's see, we... No, I was kidnapped, taken into a strange, strange place with tunnels, and I don't remember people's characters' names. It's cold, man. It's cold. Phaedrin. Phaedrin and Red Lady came and saved me. And uh, we fought some stuff, and then there was a lady with bad heritage that I told her it was bad and ugly and needed to be washed. I exploded a giant pillar so we could take it and sell it. And we found a big giant room, and we took some loot from there, and I got to mimic being in a big suit of armor. Um, and then we opened another door. Remember what was in there, and we were one. And I ran down a hallway, and this giant dude picked me up, and then told me he was gonna feed me. And now we're going there. Is Skype breaking up for anybody else? I think it is just for Belinda because she's far, far away from the Wi-Fi. Okay. So. That's probably. You must relocate to a new position. Oh, she, was, she was she was fine during the call when I was hosting. Byron. I'm not hosting. That's super weird. Michelle's I hosting. know, but you made me stop hosting. Because you said you have, like, decent internet. Michelle's got, like, blazing fast East Coast internet. <laughs> oh. Okay. Not middle of Missouri okay. internet. <laughs> so anyways, let's go ahead and move on to, uh, to Jadis. Same questions, or same, same basic rule. Like, what was important that happened last session for Phaedrin? And uh, what does she remember about what's happened so far? Um, pretty much Phaedrin was... Uh, like, knew that some people were going to be coming and would have to, like, probably need more backup to protect her current ward, Felina, the crazy gnome who has no actual name. Um, and so she went off to get reinforcements. Uh, Red Dragonborn claimed to be those reinforcements, though so Adrian had doubts but was in kind of a hurry, so they came back. Felina wasn't at the house anymore so, and had managed to blow most of it up. <laughs> and so we had to go oh, off and try to see who's it up. So we, uh, Phaedrin remembered that Felina had mentioned before that there was like a cave that she went to in a certain direction. So we went off to try to find it and we found it and there was hill giants and we fell down a pit and found Felina. So mission accomplished um, and are now trying to make our way out. Um, almost got squished by two hill giants. Yep. Super unpleasant. Um, yeah, and now, <laughs> apparently, like, apparently a very important hill giant has picked up my ward and is taking off with her for dinner. Whatever that might entail. <laughs> yes, Rock the hill giant chieftain is taking you all to dinner. Yeah. So, Michelle, you weren't here last week, but if you want to go ahead and uh, promote your beautiful boyfriend, I'd be happy for I you to do so. I will promote our channel. So, uh, we have a channel called at, uh, Minmax, or Minmaxers. Uh, we have a Wednesday stream every Wednesday that Byron is actually on. He plays Dax. The lovable Dax. The lovable um, Dax. Start... The Dax Knight. <laughs> 
We start every uh, Wednesday at 7 EST. Oh yes, last week, just like Windebur said, everybody <laughs> was, uh, a lot of people were not feeling well, so we did have to cancel last week, but hopefully we'll be back this Wednesday. Very nice. Yeah, so just like you said, uh, the stream goes live at 7.30 Eastern, 6.30 Central. Um, and it's going to be an excellent stream this week. Ray's had a lot of time to prepare for it. Obviously. So it'll be amazing. Of course. Um, and last but not least, Carolyn playing Orifrier, the angry German dragonborn. Uh, <laughs> do you want to go ahead and recount what was important for Ori last session? And then we can just get right into this. I'm ready. Um, first off, can you guys hear me okay? Because my connection's being weird. Yeah, you, yeah. you're you getting a little bit of static, but not bad. Okay. Um, let's see. Well, last week, uh, Ori finally found a viable option to make her mark, if you will. Uh, whether that be a uh, metaphorical mark or a literal scorch one. Uh, <laughs> um, and she uh, found some some like other just am I? Oh no! <laughs> <laughs> oh no! Carolyn, please. My Wi-Fi working, please. Carolyn, please. I swear to God, if my sister is streaming Netflix downstairs. Can you hear me at all? I can hear you, yeah, I can't can hear see you. you. Can you hear us? Uh, yeah, I can hear you guys fine. I just... Oh, I mean, we can always replace you with a static picture of a girl with big boobs. Like, that's my go-to. <laughs> Dear so, God. If you want to either go beat up your sister or beat up your sister. Okay, I'll be right back. <laughs> No, not anymore. Okay. Doing great. Oh, I hate it. I mean, we can just get a new router tomorrow. Like, this one's not very good. but Or we can move the router to where it's actually pointing down the hallway instead of, like, over here on my desk where it serves no purpose whatsoever. <laughs> That'd be nice. So. That'd be nice. It's all, all comfy and have my pillows all ready. <sighs> It's so hard not to sing along. <laughs> I mean, you're an actual like semi-professional singer woman, so. No, I'm not. You do like <laughs> show choir there bullshit. Is zero, there is zero professional actually involved in that. Bumblebriar. Everyone misses oh Bumblebriar. Rest in peace, Brandon. <laughs> oh God. <laughs> I thought her sister was going to Benny's or some shit. I mean, That's her sister I is thought. probably like... So last week, this is where this whole, like, why I make fun of her sister so much thing. Apparently last week when we were doing, I think it was this session, um, afterwards, Carolyn was... No, it was a Sunday night session. Carolyn was like, Byron, like, I don't want to freak her out or anything, but my sister came in while we were streaming. I was like, okay, so what? Like, it's not a big deal. And she's like, well, she was like, oh, is that that streamer with like 35 million viewers or whatever? He's hotter than I thought he was. And then walked out. Oh. <laughs> yeah, I mean, like, I don't want to make a big deal about it, but, like, you know, Carolyn's sister thinks I'm hot, so... Like, I'm not going to make a big deal, but I am going to point it out to everyone. Over and over Ever. again. Yeah, basically, for the rest of the time I know Carolyn, I'll always remind her of this. This one special moment we shared together. <laughs> oh, God, Carolyn, what happened? Where have you gone, dearest Carolyn? You know what I need to do, okay? 
for when the cameras go down, like they are right now, I need to get static pictures. Like I have one of Michelle already, but I need to get static pictures of everybody to use as placeholders. That way, what? Uh, what? The whole something something placeholders. Yeah, I need to get placeholders. <laughs> I was about to say there was like nothing. I think we went out for a minute. Okay. Yeah. It's probably Michelle. Like if we had to blame someone, no I think that Michelle would be the one to blame. Seems reasonable. Rest in peace, Carolyn. Um, different music. Back to like feasting music. <laughs> That's right. That's right, Patty. God damn it. Who in their <laughs> right mind? What happened? Uh, Carolyn asked if someone can you, add her to can, the call. Can you not just join the call? Is that not a thing? I Usually just... you can, but sometimes it gets weird. I tried, I tried, there we go. She there joined in the first it. time, fine. There we go. Can I do it? Yep, got it. Yes. Alright. We in it. Welcome back. Alright, yeah, I, uh, it was Hulu, not Netflix, but. <laughs> oh. Hi, Carolyn! What's your sister's name, Carolyn? <laughs> Anastasia. <laughs> Anastasia? Really? Are you actually yeah. like Russian dynasty? Like, is she a princess? <laughs> no. She acts like one, though. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> she has to be a younger sister. <laughs> like... No, she's older. <laughs> Are you for real? Yeah, she's 24. Okay, so anyways, back into the game. Hi, older Ori basically blew a bunch of shit. She melted my plot device. She covered in yep. treasures. Yep. And, One of the good ones. And there was a lot of tension between her and Phaedrin because, you know, one person has fire, other person has steel, who wins probably the person with most hit points. Or whatever. <laughs> so, for my recap for the D&D, &D, for the D&D, &D, for the DMing side of things last session, the party, uh, Phaedrin, went to retrieve assistance to help save... Belinda's character, question mark girl. Um, and when she, re when she returned with Ori and Toe, she found that there were three men outside of uh, Belinda's character's cabin who were wearing the green tabards with the white stag of a local uh, quasi-military unit. More like a mercenary, not really a mercenary band, but yeah, a military unit of some kind. And then they followed the large footsteps that led away from the cabin to... Deadwind Pass, and into the ancient cavern there, upon which they found a sleeping ogre, drunk by incredibly large amounts of wine on a straw pallet next to a fire, and rather than burn him alive like I figured they would, they snuck by. <laughs> they snuck by. And then triggered- With full plate. Right, and then triggered an alarm uh, further into the complex, and then they jumped into the sacrificial pit in the center of the room, down to the bottom floor, falling into a pile of bones where Belinda's character greeted them joyfully. And since that point, they went into a sort of hidden temple area in the bottom floor of this complex. They found a woman, who appeared to be a tiefling, who was completing a ritual. And she harvested a football-sized chunk of faceted topaz. And leaving behind her two hill giant guards to take care of the intruder, she disappeared in a puff of smoke. The party managed to successfully extract themselves from the situation by, you know, killing the hell giants, and then proceeded upstairs where they ransacked the chieftain's lair, took all of his treasures, melted the plot device, and now are being brought to dinner by Chief Rock, the hill giant chieftain. At this point, we have just entered the feasting hall. Um, crumbled statues surround the exterior. They appear to be, to be eight feet to ten feet tall and were once proud dwarves that have since been eroded and deliberately smashed into piles of rubble. Um, enormous tables that appear to be made of the halved trunks of large sequoia trees are scattered throughout the room with ogres and half-ogres sitting behind them, banging their tankards on the, uh, the flat surface of the tables as an enormous misshapen creature hunches out of the shadows behind a large pillar. You see a rusted iron collar around its neck and a long chain appearing to be made of black steel linking it to the pillar. 
In front of the pillar, there are the mangled bodies of three or four humanoids, some of them clad in armor, others in the robes of arcanisters and clerics. And there is a woman, I do not know what she looks like or what she's wearing, kneeling with a bucket and a scrub brush, mopping up the most recent carnage. And that would be Michelle's character. So, Michelle, if you want to describe your character. Um, <laughs> my character is a human cleric. Her name is Zashira. Um, should I just wait till um, the group meets her to kind of... I mean, you're there. Like... We uh, can see you. Yeah, no, you can you see, are. they can I see mean, you, you can see Or should I, like, should I describe what they don't know about me, or... No, just the just physical appearance. Every... physical description. Physical appearance. Oh, okay, okay. I'm a human, uh, Kalashite, so I have brown hair, I have plate armor, um, you can see that I'm a cleric, and... My holy symbol is a garland, garland of flowers that I'm wearing <laughs> on my head. <laughs> All right, Do we need to des describe what our characters look like? Actually, that sounds like a really good idea since she hasn't seen you yet. Okay. Okay, I am in the hands of that giant ogre. Uh, my character is a gnome, so she's teeny tiny with some floppy ears. <laughs> she seems extremely energetic, and right now she doesn't have the owl with her, but he is over to the left of the giant ogre, but typically it is on her shoulder, and it is completely made out of metal. Alright, I'm next. Um, technically you can't quite see her, because she's around the corner and behind the giant, um, but Phaedron is, um, around six foot, um, just kind of, like, serious, uh, like, expression pretty much all the time, um, kind of olive skin tone, dark, like, slight gray hair, and, uh, like, lighter gray eyes, and just wearing plate, he has a shield and a flail. Very nice. Uh, right behind the hill giant, um, you might only be able to um, see her legs. Um, but uh, dressed re relatively simply is a uh, six foot six, so very tall, uh, red, red dragonborn with. Uh, did we decide to buy a tattered wings or not? Sure. I think we decided I had, you did. I had tattered wings. I think we decided it makes no wings. mechanical difference. <laughs> yeah. Okay. Um, and uh, looking somewhat amused at the situation, but a bit like her smiles faltering as she's kind of attempting to look nonchalant as she's rushing behind the hill giant. And... Uh, just curious to find out what this dinner place is. And, uh... Yeah. Can I put a side note? I'm wearing splint armor, not plate armor. This motherfucker here has Asher. replaced... Is the new Daniel of the group. Like, oh no, I totally have plate, guys. <laughs> yeah, so anyways. Uh, Rock, the very charismatic hill giant chieftain, is carrying you guys into the room. He has uh, Belinda's character in his large, meaty fist, sort of swinging her as he walks. As her magic going, yeah, yeah, yeah. she's yeah. Superman. She's like, look at guys, I'm flying like the owls. Ooh, it's a party <laughs> in here. Yeah. yeah, so Rock steps a few paces further into the room and then uh, sort of tosses you over towards the pillar and you land, so you can make an acrobatics check to land on your feet. Is it acrobatics? Yes. Full bikini plate armor. Oh no. Yeah, perfect. So as he throws oh, no. you, um, you are turning a somersault to land, but you actually impact the pillar first and you basically like splat into your back, head down and slide <laughs> down the pillar. Onto your dome. You take four points of damage as the wind is knocked out of you as you impact the pillar. 
And then from behind the pillar, this huge ghastly creature lurches out of the darkness and lunges at Tiny Gnome Engineer. Oh! Right? As this happens, you see, like, are we, like, are we ent- entering initiative at this point? Oh, yeah, for sure. Or, oh, okay, because I was going to run oh. in action, but never mind. <laughs> Ooh, Guess question. Rule, then. I do not have any hit points. <gasps> what? what? Yeah. As in, you never <laughs> put them in? Yeah, like, they're not calculated in there. They were last session, and now yeah. they're not. It's weird. So, well. Uh, mm-hmm. Okay, I'm looking. I don't know. I'm looking. I don't know how many hit points I have. <laughs> <laughs> Jesus all Christ. of them. You have all the hit points. <sighs> Alright, she has a plus three constitution. Rogue is what, D8? Yeah, so she has yeah. 11 from first level. Then she takes the average. It would be what, four, five, eight from each level after that, so that's an additional 16. Then the average from her wizard level, she has five levels of wizards, so she takes three. So she takes six from each of those, so you have an extra Yeah, you have 57 hit points. Enjoy. 57? Okay. Got it. Type it's in there. Oh, thanks. Yep. Thank you. We're doing initiative, is that correct? Yep. That is correct. We're doing initiative. Your, your care, uh, token is selected. Oh, dang. I always forget. I did too. There we go. Alrighty. Into the initiative order we go. Away with you guys. Away with that guy. And we are missing... Michelle's character. Oh crap, I didn't click on the I know how to do All right, so up first is going to be Phaedron. As you see Belinda's character getting chucked across the room at this pillar and fetching up in, like, in a crumpled heap at the bottom. And this enormous creature lurching out of the shadows. Its twisted body, hugely muscular, but its bones appear to be too short. And uh, it's got a huge hunch in one shoulder and warty protrusions sticking out all over its skin. One thing you do notice as well is that one of its eyes is normal size and the other is a huge bulging uh, orb about the size of a grapefruit. And it's a sickly yellow color with a vertical pupil. Nice. Yep. So, and Rock just tossed her and kept walking. Yep, pretty much. Yeah, basically he tossed her down and then like he sort of like sat back here and he's sitting on the edge of the table watching. Okay, so he's literally just, well, he's just, uh, I can't let it eat. So, running over yeah. and gonna use the shield bash. Meh. Alright, so you're shield bashing the dude. Yep. Contested acrobatics or athletics. Got it. Yep. I mean, it's not that good for him, actually. Like, you would think this guy would have. You know, <laughs> well, or you, could you know, so funny. but uh, the TGM game is strong tonight, so you walk forward and slam your shield into its leg, and your shield buckles in the center, and like your your hand stings, you have a numbing sensation shoot up your forearm into your shoulder. Ow. Guess I'm just attacking twice then. I say, however, it does look away from Belinda's character and starts glowering at you, drool and spittle dripping from its mouth onto your face and shield. Well, I'm pretty sure it's going to look at me even harder yeah, there's, now. Yeah, <laughs> there's the one. It's so, like, as it leans down at you to, like, gather you up and it's hunch, and like, not hunch, but it's, uh, it's twisted claws, uh, just slam your flail directly into its mouth, and, like, shattered bits of fangs and rotten teeth rain down around you. Okay. <laughs> wait, wait, wait. That's a 19. Do you crit yeah, on 19s? Yeah, I'm a fighter. Crit on 19 or 20. Okay, so you're one, of those, on, you're one of those fighters. 20. Gotcha. Yeah. Okay, yeah, so, and again, like, as it draws back, howling in pain, 
Yo, Frost from Fire, thanks for the follow. Welcome to the Empire. Hope you're staying with us. Get a warm welcome and chat for Frost from Fire. As I was saying, like, as it draws back, it recoils in pain away from the flail. Uh, you just sweep around in a wide lateral arc, smashing the side of its knee and clipping its leg out from underneath it. And it stumbles into the pillar before riding itself. And is that the end of your turn? Yep. Nice, 25 points of damage. All right, uh, Orifiard, you are next. All right. Um, can I make... Would it make sense to make an arcana check to figure out what the hell this thing is? Um, it would be... Or would that be like a nature check? It would be more of a nature check, I think. Hmm. I mean, it would either be nature or history, honestly. Like, I mean, they're the same for me. So I'll just go with school of history. Mm. Do I? No, with 11, uh, this appears to be some form of giant kin, but it is not one that you would recognize as being like one of the five major types of giants. Alright, then... She is going to... Go with a um this thingy if it'll load, please. Mm. Alright, so the fourteen, like, as you sort of peek around the corner and you catch sight of this enormous creature battling with Phaedrin, your witch bolt strikes true and you see the coruscating line of energy link you to and you basically have like a whip of lightning in your hand tethering you to this creature's vast and hideous bulk for three lightning damage <laughs> yeah i'm not gonna i'm not gonna move okay so you're maintaining concentration staying there yeah okay it is now the shiria's turn um okay so how is everybody's hp right now Hey, hey you. <laughs> Don't you fucking ask those questions. You ask, how injured do they appear? How injured does everybody look right now? I mean, so Belinda's character looks kind of dazed, but not particularly badly injured. Um, and Phaedrin is, is untouched so far. That I don't know. What? Oh, wait, you, you're, hurt, you're hurt from, from last before, session. right. Yeah. yeah, Ori is not either. Okay, in that case, you let me know. Okay, but so you know I'm... what? Under three quarters oh. is when you start appearing injured. Okay, so I'm gonna move towards the no. <laughs> I don't know. She doesn't. <laughs> no one knows her name. So. <laughs> I'm like I'm gonna walk towards this tiny little thing, and then I'm going to cast um, cure wounds on her. Okay. So okay. So... I don't know, Ori's kind of a big baby. She probably just starts throwing it, showing it at like 20% down. <laughs> okay, so you have um, a heal for eight. Okay. I'm pretty sure I constitute as under three quarters. I'm not bloodied, though. Yeah, I mean, Belinda should be back at full now. So, like, yeah, you lay, you lay your hands on her, and you see, like, the spreading bruise on the back of her head, and, like, the little trickle of blood seeping down from her hairline immediately recede. And the bruise fades away into... Did Skype drop? Or like, okay, I'm sorry. Uh, yeah. And the bruise fades away into her normal flesh tone. Any other actions? Um, I'll just say, it'll be okay, little one, and pat her on the head. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Blinda, when, you pat her on the, when you pat her on the head, she's like, those are really pretty flowers. Where did you get those flowers? Oh my god, that thing is ugly. Because she just realized <laughs> the thing is over there. <laughs> so, let's see. 
and she's kind of not prone, but kind of like sitting there with um, her new buddy with the flowers. She's gonna cast haste onto. Oh my god, I need to get back into this. Phaedrin. <laughs> I love haste. It's the I best. I forgot you had that spell. <laughs> <laughs> I forget. Is it plus two? Yes. All of it's on there. Okay, so how Just... how is yes how is tiny gnome creature casting haste? What is happening? Okay, hold on. It's a plus two bonus to AAC. You have advantage to dex, saving throws, and it gains an additional action on each of your turns. Um, it can only be used to be ta- taken as an attack. No, he, One- he wants to know, like, visually how you no, cast, I'm a- I think. You have all your stuff first. Uh, oh, it's okay. I can read it. Yeah, it's in You're here. Good. All right, awesome. Um, when she sees it, um, and she says, ooh, that thing is ugly, she looks at you, and you can see her pulling another little metal owl out, which for you, your character is now seeing her take something out of her bag, but when you look at it, it is completely metal, but it has etched in a, um, owl's face onto it, and she throws it at your feet, and she's like, get it, get it, get it, get it, get it, and it kind of, like, slightly explodes at your feet and then you have you feel an overwhelming sensation that you are battle ready <laughs> those amphetamines though that's right okay so you Belinda are... as a rogue you can use your cunning action to disengage as a bonus action and then move away from this thing without taking an attack okay yes I would do that how far can I move uh, I think your move speed is 25 feet okay so I will move over here oh I don't know why. Why is it moving? What? I'm not moving. What are you doing? Where'd you go? I have no idea. <laughs> it just threw me off of the map. Okay, here we go. <laughs> right again. Where, Jesus. where are you? <laughs> Hold on. Okay, can you see me now? Yes. I went to go move over there, and it just threw me off of the map. Okay. okay. And then she's going to yell back to her new flower friend that you need to get out of there. You gotta, you gotta hurry and get out of there. And she starts running away. Okay. All right. So that's the end of your turn. So the creature, blood dripping from its mouth, from its maw, uh, a line of crackling lightning linking it and Ori, looks down at Phaedron, and you see the enormous. Like milky yellow pupil, I'm sorry, the milky yellow sclera of the thing's eye um, emanate this beam of light that encompasses Phaedron. Phaedron, you need to make a uh, charisma saving throw. Charisma? Charisma (laughs) saving throw, madam. Oh, shit. Please, 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 please. Hey! All right. So you feel the necrotic energy from this, I'm sorry, the psychic energy of this thing's brutal otherworldly assault battering at the doors into your mind. However, you manage to fight it off with your successful charisma check. You take eight damage as waves of psychic energy crash around you. However, um, you also feel your limbs begin to twist and mirror the shape of the enormous monstrosity in front of you, but with your successful save, you stave off the worst of the effect, and your limbs return to their normal size and shape. It's not creepy as shit or anything? Yeah, and as, as it knows that its ability has failed, it lets out another bellowing roar of anger and tries to slam its fist down on you, however you nimbly dodge both attacks, and it is now your turn. Okay, real quick, do you... Sorry, I messed that up. Um, do you guys do the bar thing so that it helps, you know? Like, do you want the health bar showing? I don't care. Actually, you know, as far as the viewership goes, it probably would be good. So, so okay. they can see I'll, how, I'll how close I am to TPK, you guys. <laughs> Great. All right, well... I'm going to attempt a shield bash again. Okay. Jerk. Oh yeah, that's not. Oh <laughs> shit. Oh boy. Well, I mean, it could I always crit fail too. Almost. That's two minutes. Like it's 
It meets it. So doesn't that mean, well, no, except it's a crit fail. Otherwise, I still would have beat it. Damn it. <laughs> yeah, so as your shield connects with it again, you feel it buckle even further when the leather straps holding it to your arm snaps. You still manage to hold on to your shield by the grip, but uh, it is not nearly as sturdy as it was when you again tried to bowl this huge sized creature off its feet. Continue with your actions. All right. So, in that case, I'm just going to hit it and keep hitting it. Yes, you are. <laughs> and I actually get one more attack, assuming he's. You get two still more up. attacks, don't I you? Don't... Um, I don't. It gives you it another says one full... weapon attack only. It actually specifies. Oh, okay, gotcha. All right. Yes, it is still. It is definitely still on. You've only done twenty-five damage to it. It is still on two. <laughs> no, we did uh, twenty-eight because of with yes, Carolyn's correct. three lightning. <laughs> yeah. So again, with a spin of your flail, you smash the head of the flail oh. into the creature's abdomen, Oink. knocking the breath out of it. We're raking it downward and smashing Oink. into the bony protrusions on its foot for twenty-two total damage. Any other actions? Uh, nope, that's it. Okay. And Carolyn is dropping again. Perfect, perfect. Good timing. <laughs> oh, they're saying that our um, audio is out of sync. Yeah, they've been saying it all night. I may have to take the stream down and start it back up. I don't know. Well, now's a good time to 